Donald Trump. We will soon be a great nation. Testing, again. testing. Face -face. Testing, testing. Historic. The ABC News Good evening, everyone. Debate. It is time for a very Kevin exciting debate night. David Muir and Lindsay Davis. We're playing mother freaking bingo with a brain rot soundboard. Thank you for joining us for tonight's ABC News presidential debate. You're welcome. Welcome viewers watching on ABC and around the world today. Mr. Vice Mr. President Trump and President Donald Trump are Let's just fucking go, everyone. from taking the stage in this We are playing bingo. For president. And I'm Lindsay Davis. Tonight's meeting could be the most consequential event of their campaigns with election day. Now we, we have uh, we're away. playing bingo right now. Um, we will be keeping track of all spaces. Since President Biden withdrew from the race on July 21st, of course that decision followed his debate against Go president ahead and grab your bingo Trump card exclamation point Since bingo. Then, this race has taken on an entirely new dynamic. And that brings us to the rules of tonight's debate 90 minutes with two I believe we have a correspondent no side Stewie Brian look out no. thank you Stewie the candidates will have two minutes to answer questions and this is the clock that's what they'll be seeing two minutes for rebuttals and one minute for follow-ups clarifications or responses react bot are you ready phones will only be turned on when it's their here. turn to speak. yeah all right okay written notes allowed that's fine there is no audience here tonight in this hall at the national constitution center this is an that's all right we're gonna be the fucking audience here tonight am i right everyone let's go won the coin toss he chose to deliver Hi, the final Thanks, Chuck. statement of the evening vice president harris selected the podium to the right so let's now welcome the candidates to the stage vice president kamala harris and president donald trump all right, who's first? Who's first? Who's first? <gasps> They're both first. Shake Hello, hands. Let's have a good debate. Nice you. Have fun. Thank you. V wow. It's wonderful to have you. Tonight. That was so nice. Good that was evening. A we are looking forward to a spirited and thoughtful debate. So let's get started. I want to begin tonight with the issue that voters repeatedly say is their number one issue, and that is the economy and the cost of living in this country. Vice President Harris, you and President Trump were elected four years ago, and your opponent on the stage here tonight often asks his supporters, are you better off than you were four years ago? When it comes to the economy, do you believe Mr. Americans are better off than they were four years ago? Sorry. So I was raised as a middle class kid. And I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And that is why I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. Because here's the thing. It, we know that we have a, a shortage of, of homes and housing. And the cost of housing is too expensive for far too many people. We know that young families need support to raise their children, and I intend on extending a tax cut for those families of $6,000, which is the largest child tax credit that we have given in a long time, so that those young families can afford to buy a crib, Hi, buy a car seat, buy clothes for their children. Do not come. My <laughs> passion, one of them, is small businesses. I was actually, my mother raised my sister and Middle me, class mentioned. Mark that on your bingo cards. Thank you. Us. We call her our second mother. She was a small business owner. I love our small businesses. My plan is to give a $50,000 tax deduction to start up small businesses, knowing they are part of the backbone of America's economy. My opponent, on the other hand, his plan is to do what he has done before which is to provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. Damn. My opponent has a plan that I call the Trump's sales tax, which would be a 20% tax on everyday goods that you rely on to get through the month. What the? Economists have That's said that that Trump sales tax words. would actually result for middle class families in about $4,000 more a year uh -oh. because of his policies and his ideas about what should be the backs of middle class people paying for tax cuts for billionaires. President Trump, I'll give you two minutes. First of all, I have no sales tax. That's an incorrect statement. She knows that uh, we're doing tariffs on other countries. Other countries are going to finally, after 75 years, pay us back for all that we've done for the world and the tariff will be substantial in some cases i took in billions and billions of dollars as you know from china oh. in fact they never took the tariff off because mentioned. it was so much money they can't they would totally destroy everything that they've set out to do they're taking in billions of dollars from china and other places they've left the tariffs on when i had it i had tariffs and yet i had no inflation uh, look we've had a 
terrible economy because inflation has, which is really known as a country buster, it breaks up I'm countries. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before, Catch probably the up, worst though. in our nation's history. <laughs> We were at 21%, but that's being generous because many things are 50, 60, 70, and 80% higher than they were just a few years ago. This has been a disaster for people, for the middle class, but for every class. On top of that, we have millions of people pouring into our country from Lying about inflation prisons market. and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums, and they're coming in and they're taking jobs that are occupied right now by African Americans and Hispanics and also unions. Unions are going to be affected very soon. And you see what's happening. You wow. see what's happening with towns throughout the United States. You look at Springfield, oh, Ohio. You look at Aurora in Colorado. They are taking over the towns. They're taking over buildings. They're going in violently. These are the people that she and Biden led into our country. And they're destroying our country. They're dangerous. They're at the highest level of criminality. And we have to get them out. We have to get them out fast. I created one of the greatest economies in the history of our country. I'll do it again and even better. We are going to get to immigration and border security during this debate, but uh, I would like to let Vice President Harris respond on the economy here. Well, I would love to. Let's talk about what Donald Trump left us. Donald Trump left us the worst unemployment since the Great Depression. Donald Trump left us the worst public health epidemic in a century. Donald Trump left us the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. And what we have done is clean up Donald Trump's mess. What we have done and what I intend to do is build on what we know are the aspirations and the hopes of the American people. But I'm going to tell you all in this debate tonight, you're going to hear from the same old tired playbook a bunch of lies, grievances, and name-calling. What you're going to hear tonight is a detailed and dangerous plan called Project 2025 that the former president intends on implementing if he were elected again. I believe very strongly that the American people want a president who understands the importance of bringing us together, knowing we have so much more in common than what separates us. And I pledge to you to be a president for all Americans. President Trump, will give you a minute here to respond. Number one, I have nothing to do, as you know, and as she knows better than anyone, I have oh, nothing to do lie. with Project 2020. Lie! Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas, I guess some good, some bad. But it makes no difference. I have nothing to do. Everybody knows I'm an open book. Everybody knows what I'm going to do. Cut taxes very substantially and My create a great button. economy like I did before. We I'm had the greatest economy. We got hit with a pandemic. And the pandemic was not since 1917, where 100 million people died. Has there been anything like it? We did a phenomenal job with the pandemic. We handed them over a country where the economy and where the stock market was higher than it was before the oh, pandemic got a bingo. came in. Nice. Sorry. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. We made ventilators for the entire world. We got gowns. We got masks. We did things that nobody thought possible. And people give me credit for rebuilding the military. They give me credit for a lot of things, but not enough credit for the great job we did with the pandemic. But the only jobs they got were bounce back jobs. These were jobs bounce back and it bounced back and it went to their benefit. But I was the one that created them. They know it, and so does everybody else. Vice President Harris, I'll let you respond. So Get his ass. Donald Trump has no plan for you. And when you look at his economic plan, it's all about tax breaks for the richest people. I am offering what I describe as an opportunity economy. And the best economists in our country, if not the world, have reviewed our relative plans for the future of America. It's quite a claim. What Goldman Sachs has said is that Donald Trump's plan would make the economy worse, mine would strengthen the economy. What the Wharton School has said is Donald Trump's plan would actually explode the deficit. 16 <laughs> Nobel laureates have described his economic plan as something that would increase inflation and by the middle of next year would invite a recession. You just have to look at where we are and where we stand on the issues. And I'd invite you to know that Donald Trump actually has no plan for you because he is more interested in defending himself than he is in looking out for you. It's just a sound bite. They gave her that to say. Look, 
I went to the Wharton School of Finance, and many of those professors, the top professors, turn up the think debate. My plan is a brilliant plan. It's a great plan that's gonna. There you go. What the fuck is happening? Country. It's gonna make people. What the fuck is? Go and work and oh, that's create me. jobs and create a lot of Sorry. good, solid money for our com for our country. And just to finish off, uh, I accidentally she silenced him. I was sliding the slider. Plan. Sorry. She copied Biden's plan. And it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that it just, <sighs> oh, really we'll that? try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Take a look at her plan. She doesn't have a plan. Mr. President, I do want to drill down on something you both brought up. Uh, the vice president brought up uh, your tariffs. You responded, and let's drill down on this, because your plan is what she calls is essentially a national sales tax. Your proposal calls for tariffs, as you pointed out here, on foreign imports across the board. You recently said that you might double your plan, imposing tariffs up to 20 percent on goods coming into this country. As you know, many economists say that with tariffs at that level, costs are then passed on to the consumer. Vice President Harris has argued sure you, that um, higher prices have cleared on gas, your cards food, from a few minutes clothing, ago. medication. We're on game number two right now. typical family nearly $4,000 a year. Do you believe Americans can afford higher prices because of tariffs? They're not going to have higher prices. What's going to have and who's going to have higher prices is China and <laughs> all of the countries okay. that have been ripping us off for years. I charge, I was the only president ever. China was paying us hundreds of billions of dollars, and so were other countries. And, you know, if she doesn't like them, they should have gone out and they should have immediately cut huh? the tariffs. But those tariffs huh? are there three and a half years now huh? under huh? their administration. We are going to take in billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. I had no inflation, virtually no inflation. They had the highest inflation, perhaps, in the history of our country, because okay. I've never seen a worse period of time. People can't go out and buy cereal or bacon or eggs or anything Do not else. Come. These, the people of our country are absolutely dying with what they've done. They've destroyed the economy. And all you have to do is look at a poll. The polls say 80 and 85 and even 90 percent that the Trump economy was great, that their economy was terrible. Vice President Harris, I do want to ask for your response. And you heard what the president said there, because the Biden administration did keep a number of the Trump tariffs in place. So how do you respond? Well, let's be clear that the Trump administration resulted in a trade deficit, one of the highest we've ever seen in the history of America. He invited trade wars. You want to talk about his deal with China, what he ended up doing is under Donald Trump's presidency, he ended up selling American chips to China to help them improve and modernize their military basically wow. sold us out wow. when a policy about China should be in making sure the United States of America wins the competition for the 21st century, which means focusing on the details of what that requires, focusing on relationships with our allies, focusing on investing in American-based technology so that we win the race on AI, on quantum computing, focusing on what we need to do to support America's workforce so that we don't end up having... The, the, on the short end of the stick in terms of workers' rights. Do but not what come. Donald Trump did, let's talk about this, let's. with COVID, is he actually t thanked President Xi for what he did during COVID. Look at his tweet. Wow. Thank you, President Xi, exclamation point, Got him. when we know that she was responsible for lacking and not giving us transparency about the origins of COVID. President Trump, I'll let you respond. First of all, they bought their chips from Taiwan. We <laughs> hardly make chips anymore because of uh, philosophies like they have and policies like they have. I don't say her because she has no policy. Everything that she believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. She's going to my philosophy now. In fact, I was going to send her a MAGA hat. She's gone to my philosophy, but <laughs> if she ever got elected, she'd change it, and it will be the end of our country. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's a Marxist. Her father's a Marxist professor in economics, Objection. and he taught her well. But when you look at what she's wow. done to our country, and oh, when you look laugh? at these millions and millions of people that are pouring into our country monthly, where it's, I believe, 21 million people, not the 15 that people say, and I think it's a lot higher than the 21, that's bigger than New York State pouring in. And just look at what they're doing to our country. They're criminals. Many of these oh, people Jesus. coming in are criminals. Oh, my and God. that's bad for our economy, yuck. too. You know, you Fucking mentioned yuck. before, we'll talk about immigration later. Well, bad immigration is the worst thing that can happen to our economy. They have, and she has, destroyed 
our country with policy that's barking. insane. Almost policy that you'd say they have to hate our country. President Trump, thank you. Lindsay. I want to turn to the issue of abortion. President Trump, you've often touted that you were able to kill Roe v. Wade. Last year, you said that you were proud to be the most pro-life president in American history. Then last month, you said that your administration would be great for women and their reproductive rights. In your home state of Florida, you surprised many uh, with regard to your six-week abortion ban because you initially had said that it was too short. And you said, quote, I'm going to be voting that we need more than six weeks. But then the very next day, you reversed course and said you would vote to support the six-week ban. Vice President Harris says that women shouldn't trust you on the issue of, of abortion because you've changed your position so many times. Therefore, why should they trust you? Well, the reason I'm doing that vote is because the plan is, as you know the vote is, they have abortion in the ninth month. They even have, and you can look at the governor of West Virginia, the You're previous governor of West Virginia, not the current You're governor, wrong. he's doing an excellent job. No one's doing but that. But the governor before, he said, the baby will be born, and we will decide what to do with the baby. In other words, we'll execute the baby. And that's why I did that, because that predominates, the because they're radical. The Democrats are radical in that. And her vice presidential pick, which I think was a horrible Mess them up, pick, Kamala. by the way, Mess for our up. country, because he is really out of it. But her vice presidential pick says abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. He Get also him. says Get him. execution after birth. It's an execution, no longer abortion, because the baby is born is okay. And that's not Trump okay right with now. me, hence the vote. But what I did is something for 52 years, they've been trying to get Roe v. Wade into the states. And through the uh, genius and, and heart and strength, of six Supreme Court justices, we were able to do that. Now, I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. I believe strongly in it. Ronald Reagan did also. 85% of Republicans do exceptions. And Very Ronald important. Reagan also. What? But we were able to get it, and now states are voting on it. And for the first time, you're going to see, look, this is a, an issue that's torn our country apart for 52 years. Every legal scholar, Every Democrat, every Republican, liberal, conservative, they all wanted this issue to be brought back to the states where the people could vote. And that's what that's happened. That's not even true, happened. actually. Now, Ohio, the vote was somewhat liberal. Kansas, the vote was somewhat liberal, much more liberal than people would have thought. But each individual state is voting. It's the vote of the people now. It's not tied up in the federal government. I did a oh. great service in <laughs> to do it. And the Supreme yeah, Court get his had ass great courage thought. in doing it. And I give tremendous credit to those six justices. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. Let's go! I don't want to get your response to President Trump. Well, as I said, you're going to hear a bunch of lies. Woo! And that's not actually a surprising fact. Let's understand how we got here. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did exactly as he intended. And now in over 20 states, there are Trump abortion bans, which make it criminal for a doctor or nurse to provide health care. In one state, it provides prison for life. Trump abortion bans that make no exception even for rape and incest, which understand what that means. A survivor of a crime of violation to their body does not have the right to make a decision about what happens to their body next. That is immoral. And one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government and Donald Trump certainly should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. I have talked with women around our country. You want to talk about this is what people wanted? Pregnant women who want to carry a pregnancy to term, suffering from a miscarriage, being denied care in an emergency room because the health care providers are afraid they might go to jail and she's bleeding out in a car in the parking lot? She didn't want that. Her husband didn't want that. A 12 or 13 year old survivor of incest being forced to carry a pregnancy to term. They don't want that. And I Good pledge to her. you when Congress passes a bill to put back in place the protections of Roe v. Wade as president of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. But understand, 
if Donald Trump were to be reelected, he will sign a national abortion ban. Understand, in his Project 2025, there would be a national abortion a monitor that would be monitoring your pregnancies, your miscarriages. Very I creepy. Think the that American Project 2025. People believe that certain freedoms, in particular the freedom to make decisions about one's own body, should not be made by the government. Thank you, Vice President Harris. Well, there she goes again. It's a lie. I'm not signing a ban, and there's no reason to sign a ban, because we've gotten what everybody wanted, Democrats, Republicans, and everybody else, and every legal scholar wanted it to be brought back into the states. And the states are voting, and it may take a little time, but for 52 years, this issue has torn our country apart. Or has and they've it? wanted it back in the states. And I did something that nobody thought was possible. The states are now voting. What she says is an absolute lie. And as far as the abortion ban, no, I'm not in favor of abortion ban, but it doesn't matter because this issue has now been taken over by the states. Would you veto a na national abortion ban if it came well, to Well, I won't desk? have to because, again... That's a non-answer. She said she'll go back to Congress. She'll never get the vote. It's impossible for her to get the vote, uh, especially now with the 50-50 and essentially 50-50 in both Senate and the House. She's not going to get the vote. She can't get the vote. She won't even come close to it. So it's just talk. You know what it reminds me of when they said they're going to get student loans uh, terminated and it ended up being a total catastrophe. The student loans and then Was her, I, I think probably her boss, if you call him a boss, he spends all his time on the beach. But look, her boss went out and said, we'll do it again. We'll do it a different way. And he went out, got rejected again by the Supreme Court. So all these students got... Uh, taunted with this whole thing about this whole idea and how unfair that would have been part of the reason they lost to the millions and millions of people that had to pay off their student loans they didn't get it for free but they were saying it's the same way that they talked about that that they talk about abortion but if i could just get a yes or no because you're running <laughs> jd vance has said that you would answer the question if you did come to your desk well i didn't discuss it with uh, jd in all fairness uh, jd uh, and I, I don't mind if he has a certain view, but I think he was speaking for me, but I really didn't. Oh Look, we don't have to discuss it. Answer the fucking question! She'd never be able to get it, just like she couldn't get student loans. Oh, we got a bingo, loans. nice. She couldn't get student loans. They didn't even come close to getting student loans. They taunted young people and a lot of other people that had loans. They can never get this approved. So it doesn't matter what she says about going to Congress. Well, wonderful, let's go to Congress, do it. But the fact is that for years they wanted to get it out of Congress Ugh. and out of the federal government. And Trump, we did something yapping, that everybody dude. said couldn't be done. And now oh. you have a vote of the people what on abortion. The Vice President Harris, I want to give you your time to respond. But I do want to ask, would you support any restrictions on a woman's right to an abortion? I absolutely support reinstating the protections of Roe v. Wade. And as you rightly mentioned, nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. And understand what has been happening under Donald Trump's abortion bans. Couples who pray and, 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 and dream of having a family are being denied IVF treatments. What is happening in our country? Working people, working women who are working one or two jobs who can barely afford childcare as it is, have to travel to another state to get on a plane sitting next to strangers to go and get the health care she needs, barely can afford to do it, and what you are putting her through is unconscionable. And the people of America have not, the, the majority of Americans believe in a woman's right to make decisions about her own body, and that is why in every state where this issue has been on the ballot, in red and blue states both, the people of America have voted for freedom. Vice President Excuse Harris, me, I have you. to respond. Another lie. It's another lie. I have been a leader on IVF, which, which is fertilization. The IVF, I have been a leader. In fact, when they got a very negative decision on IVF from the Alabama courts, I saw the people of Alabama and the legislature two days later huh? voted it huh? in. Huh? I've been a leader on it. They know that, and everybody else knows it. I have been a leader on fertilization IVF. I'm gonna come. And the other thing, they, you should ask, will she allow abortion in the eighth month? 
Ninth month, seventh month. Come on. Okay. Well, yeah. You know fuck yeah. Come on, dude. Why don't you answer the question? Why don't you answer That's the, the question? Would you because veto? Because under Roe v. Wade, answer the question, you, could, you, veto? you could do abortions in the seventh <laughs> month, the eighth <laughs> month, the ninth That's month, and probably after birth. Just look at the governor, former governor of, of Virginia. <laughs> the governor of Virginia said we put the baby aside and then we determine what we want to do with the baby. President Trump, thank you. We're going to turn now to immigration and border security. We know it's an issue that's important to Republicans. Republicans, Democrats, voters across the board uh, in this country. Vice President Harris, you were tasked by President Biden with getting to the root causes of migration from Central America. We know that illegal border crossings reached a record high in the Biden administration. This past June, President Biden imposed tough new asylum restrictions. We know the numbers since then have dropped significantly. But my question to you tonight is why did the administration wait until six months before the election to act? And would you have done anything differently from President Biden on this? So I'm the only person on this stage who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. And let me say that the United States Congress, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Senate, came up with a border security bill which I supported. And that bill would have put 1,500 more border agents on the border to help those folks who are working there right now overtime trying to do their job. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States. I know there are so many families watching tonight who have been personally affected by the surge of fentanyl in our country. Is a that bill in the would have put more resources to Thank allow you, us Bye. to prosecute transnational criminal organizations for trafficking in guns, drugs, and human beings. But you know what happened to that bill? Donald Trump got on the phone, called up some folks in Congress, and said, kill the bill. And you know why? because Why? he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And understand, this comes at a time where the people of our country actually need a leader who engages in solutions, go. who actually addresses the problems at hand. But what we have in the former president is someone who would prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And I'll tell you something, he's gonna talk about immigration a lot tonight, even when it's not the subject that is being raised. And I'm gonna actually do something really unusual, and I'm gonna invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies. <laughs> that's a really interesting thing to watch. You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. Sure does. He will talk Mark about it. when Mark males it. cause cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies <laughs> early yes. out of exhaustion and boredom. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him we talk about it, is you. You will not hear him talk about your needs, your dreams, and your, need, and your desires. And I'll tell you, I believe you deserve a president who actually puts you first. And I pledge to you that I will. Vice President Harris, thank you. President Trump, on that point, I want to get your response. Well, I would like to respond. Let me just ask, though, why did you try to kill that bill? And successfully so. That would have put thousands of additional He's not agents answer the and question. officers on the board. First, let me respond as to the Please. rallies. Is that I said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. Okay. And the people that do go, she's bussing them in and paying them to be there and then showing them in a different light. So she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible He's rallies. He's obsessed with rally size. Obsessed. That's because people want to take their country back. Our country oh is being God. lost. We're a failing nation. And it happened three and a half years ago. And what, what's going on here, uh -oh. you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into Jesus. our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, where are they? They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. Or are they? They're eating you the pets. Of the people you that You miserable live old there. dumb fuck. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. As far as rallies are concerned, as wow. far as the reason straight up racism. Is yeah. Like what I say. Straight they up want racism. To bring our country back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase. Make America great again. 
She's destroying this country. And if she becomes president, this country doesn't have a chance of success. Not only success, we'll end up being Venezuela on steroids. What the I just want to clarify here, you bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio, and, and ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there had been no credible reports of specific <laughs> claims of pets being harmed, <laughs> injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. <laughs> also, people on television. Let me just say here, this is the-, the People on television say my oh. dog was taken and oh. used- Shut up, old so man. Maybe he said that, and maybe that's a good yeah. thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from but television. But the people are I'm on television it from the saying city manager. their dog was eaten by the people that went there. Again, the Springfield button. city manager says there's no evidence of that. Vice we'll President Harris, out. I'll let you respond to the rest of what you've heard. <laughs> Talk about extreme. <laughs> um, you know, I, it, this is, I think, one of the reasons why in this election I actually have the endorsement of 200 Republicans who have formally worked with President Bush, Mitt Romney, and John McCain, including the endorsement of former Vice President Dick Cheney and Congress member Liz Cheney. And if you want to really know mm. the inside track on who the former president is, if he didn't make it clear already, just ask people who have worked with him. His former chief of staff, a four-star general, Beautiful. has said he has contempt for the Constitution of the United States. His former national security advisor has said he is dangerous and unfit. His former secretary of another defense one. has said the nation, the republic, would never survive another Trump term. And when we another. listen to this kind of rhetoric, when the oh, he's issues mad. that affect the American people are not being addressed... I think the choice is clear in this election. President Trump, I'll give you a quick minute to respond yeah. here. Uh, thank you, because when I hear that, see, I'm a different kind of a person. I fired most of those people. Not so graciously. They did bad things or a bad job. I fired them. They never fired one person. They didn't fire anybody having to do with Afghanistan and the Taliban and the 13 people who's, who's were just killed, viciously and violently killed. And I got to know the parents and the family. They didn't fire. They should have fired all those generals, all those top oh, people, oh, because that oh, was one of the most oh, incompetently oh. handled situations anybody has ever seen. Oh. So when somebody does oh. a bad job, I fire him. And you take a guy like Esper. He was no good. I fired him. So he writes a book. Another one writes a book. Because with me, they can write books. With nobody else, can they? But <laughs> what are you talking such about? a poor job. And they never fire anybody. Look at the economy. Look how look at the inflation. They didn't fire any of their economists. They have the I'm same people. Come. That's a good way not to have books written about you. But just to finish, I got more votes than any Republican in history by far. In fact, I got more fuck? votes than any president, sitting president in history by far. Let me continue on immigration. It was what you wanted to talk about earlier, so let's get back to your deportation uh, uh, proposal that the vice president has reacted to as well. Uh, president Trump, you call this the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. You say you would use the National Guard. You say if things get out of control, you'd have uh, no problem using the U.S. With military. Local police, yes. uh, you also said you would use local police. Uh, Dictator and you one, right? Uh, deport 11 million undocumented immigrants. I know you you believe that number is, is much higher. Uh, take us through this. What does this look like? Will authorities be going door to door in this no country? Reaction, yeah. It is much higher because of them. They allowed criminals, many, many millions of criminals. Wow. They allowed terrorists. They allowed common street criminals. They allowed people to come in, drug dealers, to come oh into our country God. Right now in the United States and told by their countries like Venezuela, don't ever come back or we're going to kill you. Do you know that crime in Venezuela and crime in countries all over the world is way down? You know why? Because they've taken their criminals off the street and they've given them to her to put into our country. And this will be one of the greatest mistakes in history for them to allow. And I think they probably did it because they think they're going to get votes, but it's not worth it because they're, they're destroying the fabric of our country by what they've done. There's never been anything done like this at all. They've destroyed the Bro, fabric of our country. That? Millions of people let in and all right, over the world. Crime is down all over the world except here. Crime here is up and through the roof, despite their fraudulent statements that they made. Crime in this country is 
through the roof. And we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. And it's happening at levels that nobody <sighs> thought Fucking possible. President Trump, as you know, the FBI says overall Blatant. violent crime is actually coming down in this country. But Excuse President me, Harris, the FBI defraud, they were defrauding statements. They, they didn't include the worst cities. They didn't include the cities with the worst crime. It was a, a fraud, just like their number of 818,000 jobs that they said they created turned out to be a fraud. President Trump, thank you. I'll let you respond, Vice President Harris. Well, I think this is so rich, <laughs> coming from someone who has been prosecuted for national security crimes, economic crimes, election interference, has been found liable for sexual assault, and his next big court appearance is in November at his own criminal sentencing. And let's be clear, where each person stands on the issue of what is important about respect for the rule of law and respect for law enforcement, the former vice president called for defunding federal law enforcement, 45,000 agents, get this, on the day after he was arraigned on 34 felony counts. So let's talk about what is important in this race. It is important that we move forward, that we turn the page on this same old tired rhetoric and address the needs of the American people, address what we need to do about the housing shortage, which I have a plan for, address what we must do to support our small businesses, address bringing down the price of groceries. But frankly, the American people are exhausted with this same old tired playbook. Vice President Harris, thank you. Excuse me. Every one of those cases was started by them against their political opponent. And I'm winning most of them, and I will win the rest on appeal. And you saw that with the decision that came down just recently from the Supreme Court. I'm winning most of them. But those are cases, this it's called weaponization. Monetized. Never happened in this country. They weaponized the Justice Department. Every one of those cases was involved with the DOJ, from Atlanta and Fawny Willis to, to the uh, Attorney General of New York and the DA in New York. Every one of those cases. And then... Oh, we they got a say, bingo. Oh, All right, new game of bingo. He was, he's a criminal. Clear your cards. They're Here we the go. ones that made them go after me. By the way, Joe Biden was found essentially guilty on the documents case. And what happened in my documents case? They said, oh, that's the toughest of them all. A complete and total victory. Two months ago, it was thrown out. It's weaponization, and they used it, and it's never happened in this country. They used it to try and win an election. President They're Trump. fake cases. President Trump, thank you. A really quick response here, Vice President Harris, on this notion of weaponization of the Justice Department. Well, let's talk about extreme and understand the context in which this election in 2024 is She's taking ready. Place. The United States Supreme Court recently ruled that the former president would essentially be immune from any misconduct if he were to enter the White House again. Understand, this is someone who has openly said he would terminate, I'm quoting, terminate the Constitution of the United States, that he would weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. That's true. Someone who has openly expressed disdain for members of our military. Understand what it would mean if Donald Trump were back in the White House with no guardrails, because certainly we know now the court won't stop him. We know J.D. Vance is not going to stop him. It's up to the American people Vice to President stop Harris. him. Thank you. Lindsay? Vice President Harris, in your last run for president. This is the one that weaponized, not me. She weaponized. I probably took a bullet to the head <laughs> because of the things that they say about me. They talk about democracy. I'm a threat to democracy. They're the threat to democracy President with a fake Trump. Russia, Russia, Russia investigation we do have a lot that to get, went nowhere. We have a lot to get to. Lindsay? Vice President Harris, in your last run for president, you said you wanted to ban fracking. Now you don't. You wanted mandatory government buyback programs for assault weapons. Now your campaign says you don't. You supported decriminalizing border crossings. Now you're taking a harder line. I know you say that your values have not changed. So then Oh, we got the Russia, Russia, that Russia. That's really funny. Changed. Verbatim. Sorry. So my values have not changed, and I'm going to discuss every one of the, at least every point that you've made. But in particular, let's talk about fracking because we're here in Pennsylvania. I made that very clear in 2020. I will not ban fracking. I have not banned fracking as Vice President of the United States. And in fact, I was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which opened new leases for fracking. 
My position is that we have got to invest in diverse sources of energy so we reduce our reliance on foreign oil. We have had the largest increase in domestic oil production in history because of an approach that recognizes that we cannot over rely on foreign oil. As it relates to my values, let me tell you, I grew up a middle class kid raised by a hardworking mother who worked and saved and was able to buy our first home when I was a teenager. The values I bring to the importance of home ownership, knowing not everybody got handed $400 million on middle a silver platter and then filed uh, bankruptcy six mentioned. times is a value that I bring to my work to say we are going to work with the private sector and home builders to increase 3 million homes, increase by 3 million homes by the end of my first term. My work that is related to having a friend when I was in high school who was sexually assaulted by her stepfather. And my focus then on protecting women and children from violent crime is based on a value that is deeply grounded in the importance of standing up for those who are most vulnerable. My work that is about protecting Social Security and Medicare is based on long-standing work that was, I have done, protecting kind of seniors from scams. Losing the plot a little. My though. values have not changed. And what is important is that there is a president who actually brings kind values meandered there. and a perspective that is about lifting people up and not beating people down and name-calling. The true measure of the leader is the leader who actually understands the strength is not in beating people down it's in lifting people up i, I intend to be bot. that president <laughs> president trump you're first of all i wasn't given 400 million dollars i wish i was my father was a brooklyn builder brooklyn queens and a great father and i learned a lot from him but i was given a fraction of that a tiny fraction and i built it into many many billions of dollars many many billions Objection. and when people see it they are even surprised so we don't have to talk about that they are Fracking? even surprised she's been against it for 12 years uh, defund the police. She's been against that forever. She gave all that stuff up very wrongly, very horribly, and everybody's laughing at it, okay? They're all laughing at it. She gave up at least 12 and probably 14 or 15 different policies. Like, she was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out, wait a minute, I'm talking now, if you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? She went out she went out in Minnesota and wanted to let criminals that killed people, that burned down Minneapolis, she went out and raised money to get them out of jail. She did things that nobody would ever think of. Mm. Now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. This is a radical left liberal that would do this. She wants to confiscate your guns, and she will never allow fracking in Pennsylvania. If she won the election, Fracking in Pennsylvania like will end on day guns. one. Just to finish one thing, so important in my opinion. So I got the oil business going like nobody has ever done before. They took, when they took over, they got rid of it, started getting rid of it, and the prices were going up the roof. They immediately. Wait, I totally missed the transphobia. Fuck, I completely missed were. that. I would have been what do you five fucking say? times, four times, five times higher because you're talking about three and a half years ago. They got it up to where I was because they had no choice, because the prices of energy were, were quadrupling and doubling. You saw what happened to gasoline. So they said, let's go back to Trump. But if she won the election, the day after that election, they'll go back to Did destroying really, our country. Even, and oil will be dead. Fossil fuel will be dead. We'll go back Jesus to windmills Christ. and we'll go back to solar, where they need a whole desert to get some energy to come out. Transgender operations. By the way, I'm a big fan of solar. Did he actually say take, that? 400, President 500 Trump. acres of desert President soil. Trump, These are not good things for the environment, as she understands. Uh -oh. Lindsay, thank you. We have an election in just Christ. 56 days. And, and I want to talk about the peaceful transfer. Sorry, sometimes power, I miss things with the soundboard. So I completely miss democracy and the role of a president his little, uh, in a moment of crisis. There. Oh, you got a bingo. Uh, Mr. President, on January 6th, you wow. told your supporters to march to the Capitol. You Here we go. You would be right there with them. Uh, the country and the world saw what played out of the Capitol that day, the officers coming under attack. Aides in the West Wing say you watched it unfold on television off the Oval Office. Uh, you did send out tweets, but it was more than two hours before you sent out that video message uh, telling your supporters to go home. Is there anything you regret about what you did? <laughs> Not a thing. He's going to say. You just said a thing that isn't covered. 
peacefully and patriotically, I said during my speech, not later on. Peacefully and patriotically. Nah, you wake them on, bitch. You know you wake them on. The other side was killed. Ashley Babbitt was shot by an out of control police officer that should have never, ever shot her. It's a disgrace. But we didn't do this group of people that have been treated so badly. I ask. What about all the people that are pouring into our country and killing people? Yeah, he literally said fight like hell. That's right, chat. She was the border czar. Remember that. She was the border czar. She doesn't want to be called the border czar because she's embarrassed by the border. In fact, she said at the beginning, oh, I'm surprised you're not talking about the border yet. That's because she knows what a bad job they've done. What about those people? What's, when are they going to be prosecuted? When are these people from countries all over the world, not just South America? Those people? They're coming in from all Those people, over Trump? the world david all over the world and crime rates are down all over oh, the world because of it but let me but just one of those you. david no. one of those people going to be prosecuted Jesus one of the Christ. people that burned oh, down minneapolis going to be prosecuted or in seattle they went into seattle they took over a big percentage of the city of seattle when are those people going to be prosecuted but let me just ask you, you might ask her that y- question you were the president you were watching it unfold on television it's no. a very simple question as we move forward to another election is there anything you regret about what you did on that day? Yes, sir. I had nothing to do with that other than they asked me to make a speech. I showed up for a speech. Nothing said, to do with that. I think it's going to be big. I went to Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington, D.C., and the mayor put it back in writing, as you know. I said, you know, this is going to be a very big rally or whatever you want to call it. And again, it wasn't done by me. It was done by others. I said, wow. I'd like to give you 10,000 National Guard or soldiers. They rejected me. Nancy Pelosi rejected me. It was just two weeks ago. Her daughter has a tape of her saying she is fully responsible for what happened. They want to get rid of that tape. It would have never happened if Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington did their job. blame everyone but himself. I wasn't responsible for security. Nancy Pelosi was responsible. She didn't do her job. The question was about you as president, (laughs) about former Speaker Pelosi, but I do want Vice President Harris to respond. Got him. I was at the Capitol on January 6th. I was the vice Uh president-elect. I was also an acting senator. I was there. Uh Uh-oh. And on that day, the president of the United States incited a violent mob to attack our nation's capital, to desecrate our nation's capital. On that day, 140 law enforcement officers were injured, and some died. And understand, the former president has been indicted and impeached for exactly that reason. But this is not an isolated situation. Let's remember Charlottesville, Mm. where there was a mob of people carrying tiki torches, Mm -hmm. spewing anti-Semitic hate. And what did the president then at the time say? What? There were fine people on each side. Let's remember that when it came to the Proud Boys, a militia, the president said, the former president said, stand back and stand by. So for everyone watching who remembers what January 6th was, I say, we don't have to go back. Let's not go back. We're not going back. It's time to turn the page. And if that was a bridge too far for you, well, there is a place in our campaign for you to stand for country, to stand for our democracy, to stand for rule of law, and to end the chaos, and to end the approach that is about attacking the foundations of our democracy because you don't like the outcome. And be clear on that point. Donald Trump, the candidate, has said in this election there will be a bloodbath if this and the outcome of this election is not to his liking. Let's turn the page on this. Let's not go back. Let's chart a course for the future and not go backwards to the past. Let me just follow up here. It was a different term, and it was a term that related to energy because they have destroyed our energy business. That was where bloodbath was. Also, on Charlottesville, that story has been, as you would say, debunked. Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Jesse, all of these people... They covered it. If they go an extra sentence, they will see it was perfect. It was debunked in almost um, every actually, newspaper. I but didn't they mean bloodbath like, like that. Just like they bring 2025 up. They bring all of this stuff up. I ask you this. You talk about the Capitol. 
Why are we allowing these millions of people to come through? Oh, my God. Border? How come she's oh. not doing it? Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what I would do, and I would be very proud to do it. Uh -oh. I would say we would both leave this debate right now. I'd like to see her go down to Washington, D.C. during this debate, because we're wasting a lot of time. Huh? Go down huh? to, because huh? she's been so huh? bad, it's so ridiculous. Go down to Washington, D.C. and let her sign a bill to close up the border, because they have the right to do it. They don't need bills. They have the right to do it. The president of the United States, you'll get him out of bed, you'll wake him up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you'll say, come on, come on down to the office, let's sign a bill. If he, if he signs a I'm bill that it. the border is closed, all he has to do is say it to the Border Patrol, who are phenomenal. If they do that, the border is Whoa. closed. Mr. Those President, people are killing many people, wanna, unlike J6. Uh, we talked immigration here tonight. I do want to <laughs> focus on this next issue to both of you, because it really brings us uh, this into focus, truth uh, in these times that we're living in. Uh, Mr. President, for three and a half years after uh, you lost the 2020 election, you repeatedly uh, falsely claimed that you won, many times saying you won sure in a did. landslide. Sure in the past couple that. of weeks leading up to this debate, uh, you have said, quote, you lost by a whisker, that you, <laughs> quote, didn't quite make it, that you came up a little bit short. That's funny. Are, I said you, that? are you now acknowledging that you lost in 2020? No, I don't acknowledge that at all. But I you said did that say sarcastically. That. You but know that. And we said, oh, we lost by a whisker. That was said sarcastically. Look, there's so much proof. All you have to do is look at it. I was trolling, it. And they you should see. have sent it back to the legislatures for approval. I got almost 75 million votes, the most votes any sitting president has ever gotten. I was told if I got 63, which was what I got in 2016. Yeah, how much did the other guy get? Hey, beaten. Trump, how much did the other guy get, the though? The election, people should never be thinking about it. An election is fraudulent. We need two things. We need walls. We need, and we have to have it. We have to have borders. Or do we? And we have to have good elections. Our elections we have good are elections. bad. No. And a lot of these no. illegal immigrants no. coming in, no. they're trying to get them to vote. They can't even speak English. They don't even know what country they're in practically. And these people are trying to get them to vote. And that's why they're allowing them to come into our country. I oh did watch God. all of these pieces huh? of video. I, I, I huh? didn't detect the sarcasm. Lost by a whisker. We didn't quite make it. <laughs> we should just point out here as a clarification, and you know this, uh, you and your allies, 60 cases in front of many judges, many of them No Republican, judge looked at it. Ooh, someone got a bingo. said we didn't have standing. Fraud. Uh, That's the other thing. They said we didn't have moderator, a boom. technicality. A Can you space. imagine a system where a person in an election doesn't game. have standing? Sure the your president things. of the United States doesn't have standing. That's how we lost. If you look at the facts, and I'd love to have you you'll do a special on it. I'll show you Georgia, and I'll show you Wisconsin, nice and I'll show you Pennsylvania, ever. and I'll show you. We have so many facts and statistics, but you know what? That doesn't matter because we have to solve the problem that we have right now. That's old news. And the problem that we have right now is we have a nation in decline and they have put it into decline. We have a nation that is dying, David. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, Vice President Harris, uh, you heard the president there tonight. He said he didn't say that, that he lost by whisker. So he still uh, believes uh, he did not lose the election. Yep. Uh, that was won by President Biden uh, and Biden! yourself. Uh, but I do want to ask you about something that's come up in the last couple of days. This was a post from uh, President Trump uh, about this upcoming election uh, just weeks away. He said, when I win, those people who cheated, and then he lists donors, voters, election officials, he says will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, which will include long-term prison sentences. One of your campaign's top lawyers responded saying, we won't let Donald Trump intimidate us. We won't let him suppress the vote. Is that what you believe he's trying to do here? Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. Got him. But we cannot uh -oh. afford to have a president of the United States who attempts, as he did in the past, to upend the will of the voters in a free and fair election. And I'm going to tell you that I have traveled the world as vice president of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom work with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way in a presidential debate and deny what over and over again are court cases you have lost because you did, in fact, lose that election. It leads one to believe that perhaps we do not have in the candidate to my right the temperament or, or the ability to not be confused about fact.
That's deeply <laughs> troubling, and the American people deserve better. Damn right. I'll give you one minute to respond, Mr. President. Hey, let me just say about world leaders. Victor Orban, one of the most respected men, they call him a strong man. He's a, he's a tough person. Huh? He's smart. The Prime what Minister the of Hungary. They said, why is the whole world blowing up? Three years ago, it wasn't. Why is it blowing up? He said, because you need Trump back as president. They were afraid of him. China was afraid, and I don't like to use the word afraid, but I'm just quoting him. China was afraid of him. Bro, North Korea was afraid that. of him. Look at what's going on with North Korea, by the way. He said Russia was afraid of him. I ended the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, and Biden put it back on day one, but he ended the XL pipeline. The XL pipeline Why are we talking in about our country, pipelines? he ended that. But what he let the, the Russians build a pipeline going all over Europe and heading into Germany, the biggest pipeline in the world. Look, Viktor Orban said it. He said the most respected, most feared person is Donald Trump. We had no problems when Trump was president. But when this weak, pathetic man that you saw at a debate just a few months ago, that if he weren't in that debate, he'd be running instead of her. She got no votes. He got 14 million votes. What you did, you talk about a threat to democracy. He got 14 million votes, and they threw him out of office. And you know what? I'll give you a little secret. He hates her. He can't stand her. <laughs> but he got 14 million votes. <laughs> They what threw the him out. Oh, she got oh, zero oh. votes. And when she ran, he is very she was pissed. the first one to leave because she failed. She's and keeping now her cool. She's running. And he's blowing up. This is Trump right now. With it because Your time is I think up. we're going to do very well. We've got a lot more to get to. Turning now yes. to the Israel Hamas war and the hostages who are still being held, Americans among them. Vice President Harris in December yeah, yelling. You said, quote, Israel yelling has a right to defend itself. But you added, quote, it matters how, saying international humanitarian law must be respected. Israel must do more to protect innocent civilians. You said that nine months ago. Now an estimated 40,000 Palestinians are dead. Nearly 100 hostages remain. Just last week, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said there's not a deal in the making. President Biden has not been able to break through the stalemate. How would you do it? Well, let's understand how we got here. On October 7, Hamas, a terrorist organization, slaughtered 1,200 Israelis, many of them young people who were simply attending a concert. Women were horribly raped. And so absolutely, I said then, I say now, Israel has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters. Because it is also true, far too many this isn't gonna go anywhere. innocent Palestinians have been killed children, mothers. What we know is that this war must end. It must when end immediately, and the way it will end is we need a ceasefire deal and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Work around the clock also understanding that we must a a chart a course for a two-state solution. And in that solution, there must be Security for the Israeli people and Israel and in equal measure for the Palestinians. But the one thing I will assure you always, I will always give Israel the ability to defend itself, in particular as it relates to, as it relates to Iran yeah, and any threat that Iran and its proxies pose to Israel. That's what we're not crazy about. But we about. must have a two-state solution where we can rebuild Gaza, where the Palestinians have security, self-determination, and the dignity they so rightly deserve. President Trump, how would you negotiate with Netanyahu and also Hamas in order to get the hostages out and prevent the killing of more innocent civilians in Gaza? If I were president, it would have never started. If I were president, Russia would have never, ever. I know Putin very Russia? well. He would what? have never, and what? there's no threat the of it either, by the way, for four years, huh? have gone into huh? Ukraine and killed the millions of people. The question was about, when you added up was not about Russia. Western people understand what's going on huh? over there. Huh? Huh? But when she mentions about Israel, all of a sudden, she hates Israel. She wouldn't even meet with Netanyahu when he went to Congress to make a very important speech. She refused to be there because she was at a sorority party of hers. She wanted to go to the sorority party. She hates Israel. If she's president, I believe that Israel will not exist within two years from now. And I've been pretty good at predictions, and I hope I'm wrong about that one. That's she hates one Israel. Your most at wrong the same predictions time, ever, actually. in her own way, she hates the Arab population because the whole place is going to get blown up 
Arabs, Jewish people, Israel. Israel will be gone. Huh? It would have never happened. Iran was broke under Donald Trump. Now Iran has $300 billion because they took off all the sanctions that I had. Iran had no money for Hamas or Hezbollah or any of the 28 different uh, spheres of terror. And they are spheres of terror, horrible terror. They had no money. It was a big story, and you know it. You covered it very well, actually. They had no money for terror. They were broke. Now they're a rich nation. And now what they're doing is they're spreading that money around. Huh? Look at what's happening with the Houthis and Yemen. Look at what's going on in the Middle East. This would have never happened. I will get that settled and fast, and I'll mm, get the war the culture, with Ukraine no. and Russia ended. No react, Bob. If I'm president He's really not. Act, I'll get it done He's really before not. even becoming president. Vice President Harris, he says you hate Israel. Uh, oh, that's absolutely not true. I have my entire career and life supported Israel and the Israeli people. He knows that. He's trying to, again, divide and, and distract from the reality, which is it is very well known that Donald Trump is weak and wrong on national security and foreign policy. It is well known that he admires Boom. dictators. That's wants true. Wants to be a dictator on there day one, according to himself. Boom. That is it true. It is well known that he said of Putin that he can do whatever the hell he wants and go into Ukraine. It is well known that he said when Russia went into Ukraine, it was brilliant. It is well known he exchanged love letters with Kim Jong-un. And it is absolutely well known that these dictators and autocrats are rooting for you to be president again because they're so clear. They can manipulate you with flattery and favors. And that is why so many military leaders who you have worked with have told her. me you are a disgrace. That is why we understand that we have to have a president who is not consistently weak and wrong on Vice national president security, Harris. including the importance of upholding and respecting in highest regard our military. Vice President Harris, thank you. They're the ones, and she's the one that caused it, that's weak on national security by allowing every nation last month for the year, 168 different countries sending people into our country. Their crime weights are way down. Putin endorsed her last week, said, I hope she wins. And I think he meant it because what he's gotten away with is absolutely incredible. It wouldn't have happened with me. The leaders of other countries think that they're weak and incompetent. Did you say and crime weights? Are. Damn they're it. Grossly I missed that. Incompetent. Fuck. And I just ask one question. Why does Biden go in and kill the Keystone Pipeline and approve the single biggest deal that Russia's ever huh? made, Nord huh? Stream 2, the huh? biggest what? pipeline anywhere in the world, really like focused Germany on this pipeline. and all Europe, because they're weak and they're ineffective. And Biden, by the way, President gets paid Trump, a lot of money. Thank you. We have a lot of issues to get to. We'll be right back with much more of this historic ABC News presidential oh, debate from the National Constitution Center right here in Philadelphia. Back in a moment. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Okay. Well, well, well. All right. So we have a little bit of a commercial break. Wow. Uh, gamers, how are we doing in the chat? We've got a, a number, a number of bingos I see. Um, uh, I've lost track of all the bingos so far. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, so we're gifting subs. So get your bingo cards ready for the next one. We have, uh, three spots that we've called already in this current game. All right. So again, if you're like, how do I get this? How do I play bingo? Exclamation point bingo in the chat. Spits out a link. Click that link and you get a customized, personalized bingo card just for you. Keep track. Your bingo card is going to look different from the other guy's bingo card and the other. Because um, we have more spaces than what you see on your card. All right. So um, you will not have every single one of the of the things that we call in the little master list over here. Uh, just classic. How do you say you got a bingo? That's a very good question. If you get a bingo, um, actually, the instructions are uh, pinned in the chat. They're pinned in the chat. So if you get a bingo and you're like, how do I... I want to win that, um, you know, I, I want to be gifted a Twitch sub. Um, we have instructions in the pinned, uh, in the pinned chat. Uh, if you get a bingo, you type exclamation point bingo win and then brack, uh, your card number. Um, and your card number's in the bottom right menu of your bingo card. All right. It's not in the URL. It's in the bottom right corner. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that's how you declare uh, your bingo. And then we have a team that will um, uh, verify your bingo. Not you know, make sure you're not just whistling Dixie. You know, hey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, this is uh, wow. What a debate. Okay, I will say, um, Vice President Harris is uh, doing a much better job than Biden. Oh my God, that was rough. The last one, that was really that was tough to watch. Um, it it does not feel like that anymore. <laughs> Feels like uh, Harris can hold her own and then some. So it's refreshing to see someone actually uh, properly debate Trump. Call him out on his bullshit. Call him out on his lies. Um, fuck, the moderators are calling him out on his lies, which is great. Uh, we need we need more of that. Uh, <laughs> someone in the chat just said, it's kind of sad how many bingos we're getting. We're in shambles. Yeah, yeah, not a good sign that these bingos are, you know, just racking up. Um, but, uh, you know, we're trying to make it fun. With the bingo. So again, if you get a bingo, then you have a pretty good chance of being gifted a Twitch sub. Um, ReactBot, what do you think about bingo so far? Well, that just happened. My man, thank you. Saying nothing and looking good doing it. You know, give it up for ReactBot. <laughs> My man spitting facts. Looking good doing it. Uh, hell yeah. Can we give a shout out to Hulu? Uh, no, you don't have to. Um, but yeah, viewers, we're having, we're having a lot of fun here. Um... <laughs> This is, it's, it's painful. This is the state we're in right now. Um, but it's a better debate than what I watched uh, a few months ago. Um, and uh, I'm having a much, uh, much better time. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a much better time than I was a few months ago. Also, you can't see it, but I have a beautiful soundboard here with dozens of buttons. Just all these, like, I haven't used this one. Poggers. I haven't used that one uh, too many times. Uh, this is a brand new one. I love that one. Kai made that for us. Thank you, Kai. Um, Kai. I'll be real. Kai made most of these. Let's be, uh, you know. Um, last minute one, Kai sent me uh, this one, which is just fucking phenomenal. Um, but, uh, but yeah. React bot, do you have like a favorite, uh, do you have a favorite button? Bro, not this again. All right. Well, sh shit, I didn't realize I asked you that before. All right. Huh? Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the presidential debate. Harris is holding her own. Trump is just... Trump is getting very angry. He is ranting, raving, losing the plot. Um, Harris has lost the plot um, a co only a handful of times. In comparison to Trump, though, it's not, it's a drop in the ocean. My goodness gracious. Trump is... Fla yeah, Trump is floundering big time. Oh, not there yet. Um Old man yells at cloud coded. Well said, uh, Jorgle. Well said. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, but uh, yeah, if you can vote, please vote. Oh my God. If you can please, if you can vote, make sure you're registered properly. Um, this is one of those elections where your vote uh, actually very much matters. I fear it'll be close. All right. Everyone shut up. Live from the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Here I'm again, this, David and Muir and Lindsey Davis. I know, man. Welcome me neither. Me neither react, but presidential debate. Lot going on. We're going to continue here, and I want to turn to the war in Ukraine. We're now two and a half years uh, into this conflict, Mr. President. It has been the position We're of the hear more Russia. administration Even more that Russia. we must defend Ukraine so get your, from Russia, from Vladimir Putin, to defend their sovereignty, get your Russia their square democracy. Ready, that it's have America's it. best interest to do so, arguing that if Putin wins, he may be emboldened to move even further into other countries. You have said you would solve this war in 24 hours. You said so just before the break tonight. How exactly would you do that? And I want to ask you a very simple question tonight. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? I want the war to stop. I want to save lives that are being uselessly, people being killed by the millions. It's the millions. It's so much worse Saying than nothing. the numbers that you're getting, which are fake numbers. Look saying nothing we're in for 250 billion or more because they don't ask europe which is a much bigger beneficiary to getting this thing done than we are they're in for 150 billion dollars less because biden and you don't have the courage to ask europe like i did with nato they paid billions He's getting and angry billions, hundreds of billions uh oh of daddy's dollars getting angry said, either you pay up or we're not going to protect you anymore so that's maybe uh -oh. one of the reasons i don't like me as much as they like weak people. But what the you take a look at what's happening. 
We're in for 250 to 275 billion. They're into 100 to 150. They should be forced Brian, to equalize. Cow. With that being said, so I, hear from I want to get the war settled. I know Zelensky very well, and I know Putin very well. I have a good he, relationship, and they respect I know he knows your Putin. president. Okay, they respect me. They don't respect Biden. How would you respect him? Why? For what reason? He hasn't even made a phone call in two years to Putin. Hasn't spoken to anybody. They don't even try and get it. That is a war that's dying to be settled. I will get it settled before I even become president. If I win, when I'm president-elect, <laughs> And what I'll do is I'll speak to one, I'll speak to the other, I'll get them together. That <laughs> never happened. And I'll make fact, them kiss. I <laughs> after I left, unfortunately, it'll be all over. Because our, I'll our get them together. We'll have a nice hell. lunch. But after I left, when I saw him Some building hoagies. up soldiers, I'll he make did him it kiss. After I left, I said, "Oh, he must be negotiating. It must be a More good, free, strong point of negotiation." Well, violence. it wasn't because Biden had no idea how to talk to him. He had no idea how to stop it. And now you have millions of people dead, and it's only getting worse. And it could lead to World War Three. Don't kid yourself, David. We're playing with World War Three. Yeah, fear mongering. Let's go. That we don't even know if he's. Where is our president? We don't even know if he's a president. And, and just to clarify, they here. threw him out of a campaign like a dog. We don't even know. <laughs> is he our president? But we have a president, Mr. President, that doesn't know he's alive. Your time is up. Jesus. Just to clarify well, in the question, do you believe it's in the U.S. best interest? For Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished and f just get it done. Nothing. Negotiate a deal. Nothing. Because we have no to stop answer. all of these human lives no answer. from being destroyed. I want to no. take this to Vice President Harris. I want to get your thoughts on uh, support for Ukraine in this moment, but also as Commander in Chief, if elected, how would you deal with Vladimir Putin, and would it be any different from what we're seeing from President Biden? Well, first of all, it's important to remind the former president, you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me. I believe the reason that Donald Amazing. Trump says that this war would be over within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. Woo! And that's not who we are as Americans. Let's understand what happened here. Um, I actually met with Zelensky a few days before Russia invaded tried through force to change territorial boundaries to defy one of the most important international rules and norms, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And I met with President Zelensky. I shared with him American intelligence about how he could defend himself. Days later, I went to NATO's eastern flank, to Poland and Romania. And through the work that I and others did, we brought 50 countries together to support Ukraine in its righteous defense. And because of our support, because of the air defense, the ammunition, the artillery, the javelins, the Abrams tanks that we have provided, Ukraine stands as an independent and free country. If Donald Trump were president, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv right now. And understand what that would mean, because Putin's agenda is not just about Ukraine. Understand why the European allies and our NATO allies are so thankful that you are no longer president and that we understand the importance of the greatest military alliance the world has ever known, which is NATO, and what we have done to preserve the ability of Zelensky and the Ukrainians to fight for their independence. Otherwise, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv with his eyes on the rest of Europe, starting with Poland. And why don't you tell the 800,000 Polish Americans right here in Pennsylvania Damn. how quickly you would give up for the sake of favor and what you think is a friendship with what is known to be a dictator who would eat you for lunch. Vice President Harris, thank you. We've heard from both of you on Ukraine tonight. Afghanistan came up in the last hour. I, I wanted to respond responded to what you said earlier. And I'll Please, I'll, I'll give you a minute here. <laughs> Putin would be sitting in Moscow, and he wouldn't have lost 300,000 men and women, but he would have been sitting in Moscow. Quiet, please. Oh. He would have been sitting in Moscow, much happier than he is right now. But eventually, you know, he's got a thing that other people don't have. He's got nuclear weapons. They don't ever talk about that. He's got <laughs> nuclear weapons. Nobody ever thinks about that. And eventually, uh, maybe he'll use them, and maybe he hasn't been that threatening. 
but he does have that. Something we don't even like to talk about. Nobody likes to talk about it. But just so you Sucking understand, up to a they sent her to negotiate peace before this war started. Three days later, he went in and he started the war because everything they said was weak and stupid. They said the wrong things. That war should have never started. She was the emissary. They sent oh. her in to negotiate with Zelensky and Putin. And she did. Love that. And the war started three days later. That and that's the kind of talent we have with her. She's worse than Biden. In my opinion, I think he's the worst president in the history of our country. She goes down as the worst vice president in the history of our country. But let me tell you something. She is a horrible negotiator. They sent her in to negotiate. As soon as they left, Putin did the invasion. President Trump, thank you. There's no relation. You said she went to negotiate with Vladimir Putin. Vice President Harris, have you ever met Vladimir Putin? Can you clarify tonight? Yet again, I said it at the beginning of this debate, you're going to hear a bunch of lies coming from this fellow. And that is another one. When I went to Get meet with President Zelensky, I've now met with him over five times. Boom. The reality is it has been about standing as America always should as a leader upholding international new rules and norms, as a leader who shows strength, understanding that the alliances we have around the world are dependent on our ability to look out for our friends and not favor our enemies because you adore strongmen instead of caring about democracy. And that is very much what is at stake here. The president of the United States is commander in chief and the American people have a right to rely on a president who understands the significance of America's role and come. responsibility in terms of ensuring that there is stability and ensuring we stand Ponders. up for our principles and not sell them for the, for the benefit of personal flattery. We talked about Ukraine and Vladimir Putin. I do want to That's talk about crazy, Afghanistan. It came up in, in the first hour of this debate. I, I, I want to move on to General Afghanistan. Soltenberg said Trump did the most amazing thing I've ever seen. He got these countries, the 28 countries at the time, to pay up. He said, I've never seen. He's the head of NATO. He said, what I've never seen. For years, we were paying almost all of NATO. We were being ripped off by European nations, both on trade and on NATO. I got them to pay up by saying one of the statements you made before, if you don't pay, we're not going to protect you. President Otherwise, Trump. we would have never gotten it. He said it was one of the most incredible <laughs> President, jobs shut, shut the fuck up. he's ever shut, seen President Trump, shut, shut the fuck up. I want Thank to turn you. to shut Afghanistan. Up. It came up in the first hour of the debate, and we witnessed a, a poignant moment today on Capitol Hill honoring the soldiers who died in the chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. I do want to ask the vice president, uh, do you believe you bear any responsibility in the way that withdrawal played out? Well, I will tell you, I agreed with President Biden's decision to pull out of Afghanistan. Four presidents said they would, and Joe Biden did. And as a result, America's taxpayers are not paying the $300 million a day. We were paying for that endless war. And as of today, there is not one member of the United States military who is in active duty in a combat zone in any war zone around the world the first time this century. Hey, check your uh, bingo cards, by the way. let's understand how we got to We've where we are. we a lot of spots this game. Donald Trump, when he was president, negotiated one of the weakest deals you can imagine. He calls himself a deal maker. Even his national security advisor said it was a weak, terrible deal. And here's how it went down. He bypassed the Afghan government. He negotiated directly with a terrorist organization called the Taliban. The negotiation involved the Taliban getting 5,000 terrorists, Taliban terrorists released. And get this, no, get this. And oh. The president at the time invited the Taliban to Camp David, a place of storied significance for us as Americans, a place where we honor the importance of American diplomacy, where we invite and receive respected world leaders. And this former president, as president, she invited to say else. them to Camp David, because he does not again appreciate the role and responsibility of the President of the United States sure. to be Commander in Chief with a level of respect. And this gets back to the point of how he has consistently disparaged and demeaned members of our military, yep. fallen soldiers, and the work that we must do to uphold the strength 
and the respect of the United States of America around the world. President Harris, thank you. President Trump, your response to her saying that you began the negotiations yeah, thank with the you. Taliban. So, if you take a look at that period of time, the Taliban was killing our soldiers, a lot of them, with snipers. And I got involved with the Taliban because the Taliban was doing the killing. That's the fighting force within Afghanistan. They don't bother doing that because, you know, they deal with the wrong people all the time. But I got involved. And Abdul is the head of the Taliban. He is still the head of the Taliban. And I told Abdul, don't do it anymore. You do it anymore, you're going to have problems. And he no said, way. why do you send and me I a picture way. of my house? I said, you're going to have to figure that out, Abdul. And for 18 months, we had nobody killed. We did have an agreement negotiated do by Mike Pompeo. Anymore. It was a very good agreement. The reason it was good, it was we were getting out. We would have been out faster than them, but we wouldn't have no, lost no, the soldiers. Do that. We wouldn't have left many Americans behind, and we wouldn't have left. We wouldn't have left <laughs> eighty-five billion dollars worth of brand new, beautiful military <laughs> equipment behind. And just to finish, they blew it. The agreement said you have to do this, 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 and they didn't do it. They didn't do it. The agreement was was terminated by us because they didn't do what they were supposed to I, do. I want to move and on. And these people I did too the worst move on. withdrawal and, in my opinion, the this most embarrassing moment in the history of our get. country. And by the way, that's why Russia attacked Ukraine, because they saw how incompetent she and her boss are. President Trump, thank you. I want to move on. Oh my God, she's in disbelief. She's like, in what are you saying? Mr. President, dude? you recently said of Vice President Harris, quote, I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago. Right, there's been a bingo winner. To turn New black, game. And now she wants to be known as black. I want to ask a bigger Ooh, picture question here tonight. Question. Why do you believe it's appropriate to weigh in on the racial identity of your opponent? I don't, and I don't care. I don't care what she is. I don't care. Then why'd you uh, bring it up, dude? You make a big deal out of something. I couldn't care less. Whatever she wants to be is okay with me. But those were your words, so I'm I asking. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. As I read where she was not black, that she put out, and I'll say that. And then I read that she was black, and that's okay. Either one was okay with me. That's up to her. That's Vice up to her. Vice President Harris, your thoughts on this? I think it's. I mean, honestly, I think it's a tragedy that we have um, someone who wants to be president who has consistently over the course of his career attempted to use race to divide the american people you know i do believe that the vast majority of us know that we have so much more in common than what separates us and we don't want this kind of approach that is just constantly trying to divide us and especially by race and let's remember how donald trump started he was a a, a, a land he owned land he owned buildings and he, he was investigated because he refused to rent property to black families. Let's remember, this is the same individual who took out a full page ad in the New York Times calling for the execution of five young black and Latino boys who were innocent, the Central Park Five, took out a full page ad calling for their execution. This is the same individual who spread birther lies about the first black president of the United States. And I think the American people Remember that? want better than that. Want yeah, better they do. than this. Want someone who understands as I do, I travel our country. We see in each other a friend. We see in each other a neighbor. We don't want a leader who is constantly trying to have Americans point their fingers at each other. I meet with people all the time who tell me, can we please just have discourse about how we're going to invest in the aspirations and the ambitions and the dreams of the American people? Knowing that regardless of people's color or the language their grandmother speaks, we all have the same dreams and aspirations and want Legit a president move. who invests in those, not in hate and division. Thank you. Lindsay? President Trump, this is now your third time. This is the most divisive presidency <laughs> in the history of our country. There's never been anything like it. They're destroying our country, <laughs> and they come up with things like... 
What she just said. They quote. They well, quote you. Many, many they come years, up with these things I say because I said them. Agreed with me on the Central Park Five. They admitted. They said they pled guilty. I'm gonna do and I it. I said, well, if they pled guilty, they badly hurt a person, killed a person, ultimately. And if they pled guilty, then they pled. We're not guilty. But this is a person that has to stretch back years, 40, 50 years ago, because there's nothing now. I built one of the greatest economies in the history of the world, and I'm going to build it again. It's going to be bigger, better, and stronger. But they're destroying our economy. They have no idea what a good economy is. Their oil policies, every single policy. And remember this, she is Biden. You know, she's trying to get away from Biden. I don't know the gentleman, she says. She is Biden. The worst inflation we've ever had. A horrible economy because inflation has made it so bad. Mr. And she President, can't get away with that. Thank you. Your time is up. Uh, I want to respond to that, though. I want to just respond briefly. Make Clearly, I am not Joe Biden. And I am certainly not Donald Trump. And what I do offer is a new generation of leadership for our country. One who believes in what is possible. One who brings a sense of optimism about what we can do instead of always disparaging the American people. I believe in what we can do to strengthen our small businesses, which is why I have a plan. Let's talk about our plans and, th and let's compare the plans. I have I a plan to give startup right, businesses $50,000 tax deduction to pursue their ambitions, their innovation, their ideas, their hard work. I have a plan, $6,000 for young families for the first year of your child's life to help you in that most critical stage of your child's development. I have a plan that is about allowing people to be able to pursue what has been fleeting in terms of the American dream by offering a help with down payment of $25,000 down payment assistance for first time home buyers. That's the kind of conversation I believe, David, that people really want tonight, as opposed to a conversation that is constantly about belittling and name calling. Let's turn the page Vice President and move Harris, forward. Thank you. Let's turn to policy. President let's Trump, turn back we to have policy. to move on. To President Trump. Let's turn to policy, she please. She has a plan to defund the police. She has a plan to confiscate everybody's guns. <laughs> she has a plan to, to not issues. allow fracking in Pennsylvania or anywhere else. Okay, thank That's you, what President. her plan is until just... Coming after your guns. President, President, Trump, Trump, no, the, President the Trump... President has said no, something twice that I need to respond. No, yeah, you have to. Sorry. Come on, let her speak. One time President, time President, Trump. What he President has Trump, this is times. now your yes. third time running for President. You have long vowed to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. You have failed to accomplish that. You now say you're going to keep Obamacare quote, unless we can do something much better. Correct. Last month, you said, quote, we're working on it. So tonight, nine years after you first started running, do you have a plan, and can you tell us what it is? Obamacare gonna... was lousy health care. Always was. It's not very good today. And what I said, that if we come up with something, and we are working on things, we're going to do it, and we're going to replace it. But remember this. I inherited Would Obamacare you say working on a certain because project, Democrats Mr. wouldn't change it. They wouldn't vote for it. They were unanimous. They wouldn't vote to change it. If they would have done that, we would have had a much better plan than Obamacare. But the Democrats came up. They wouldn't vote for it. I had a choice to make when I was president. Do I save it and make it as good as it can be? Never going to be great. Or do I let it rot? And I felt I had an obligation, even though politically it would have been good to just let it rot and let it go away. I decided, and I told my people, the top people, and they're very good people. I have a lot of good people in this that administration. Oh. We read about the bad ones. We had some real bad ones, too, and so do they. Oh, they have really the bad ones. The difference is they don't get rid Ryan, of them. But let cow. me just no. explain. I had a choice to make. Do I save it and make it as good as it can be, or do I let it rot? And I saved it. I did the right thing. But it's still never going to be great, and it's too expensive for people. And what we will do is we're looking at different plans. Uh -oh. If we can come up with a plan that's going to cost our people, our population, less money and be better health care than Obamacare, then I would absolutely do it. But until then, I'd Everybody. run it as good as it can be run. So just a yes or no, you still do not have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. <laughs> I'm not president right now. But if...
We come up with something. I would only change it if we come up with something that's better and less expensive. And there are concepts and options we Idiot. we have to do that. And you'll be hearing about it in the not too distant future. Vice President Harris, in 2017, you supported Bernie Sanders' She's proposal to, to do away with private insurance and create a government-run health care system. Two years later, you proposed a plan that included a private insurance option. What is your plan today? Well, first of all, I absolutely support, and over the last four years as vice president, private health care options. But what we need to do is maintain and grow the Affordable Care Act. But I, I'll, I'll get to that, Lindsay. I just need to respond to a previous point do it. that the former Come on. president has made. Let's I've go. made very clear my position on fracking. And then this business about taking everyone's guns away. Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. So stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. As it relates to the Affordable Care Act, understand, let, just look at the history to know where people stand. When Donald Trump was president, 60 times he tried to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. 60 times. I was a senator at the time when I will never forget the early morning hours when it was up for a vote in the United States Senate and the late, great John McCain, who you have disparaged as being, a, a, you don't like him, you said at the time, because he got caught. He was an American hero. The late, great John McCain, I will never forget that night, walked onto the Senate floor and said, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't get rid of the Affordable Care Act. You have no plan. And what the Affordable Care Act has done is eliminate the ability of insurance companies to deny people with pre-existing conditions. I don't have to tell the people watching tonight, you remember what that was like? Remember when an insurance company could deny if a child had asthma, if someone was a breast cancer survivor, if a, if a grandparent Do you think the had late diabetes? great was a reference to late great Hannibal Lecter? As I've been vice president and we like over the subtle... last four years have strengthened the Affordable Care Act, we have allowed for the first time Medicare to negotiate drug prices okay. on behalf of you, the American people. Donald Trump said he was going to allow Medicare to negotiate pr drug prices. He never did. We did. And now we have capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month. Since I've been vice president, we have capped the cost of prescription medication for seniors at $2,000 a year. And when I am president, we will do that for all people understanding that the value I bring to this is that access to health care should be a right and not just a privilege of those not who can afford it. And the plan has to react, be but? to strengthen the Affordable Care Act, not get rid of it, Vice Passed President Harris, thank in terms you. of where Donald Trump stands on that. I want to move to an issue well, that's important for a lot of... She made a mistake. At number one, John McCain fought Obamacare for 10 years. But it wasn't only him. It were all of the Democrats that kept it going. And you know what? We can do much better than Obamacare. Much less money. But she won't improve private insurance for people. Private, private medical insurance. That's another thing she doesn't want to President get. People Trump. are paying privately for insurance that have worked hard and made money and they want to have private. She wants everybody to be on government insurance where you wait six months for an operation that you okay. need to meet. President Trump, thank you. We have another issue that we'd like to get to that's important for a number of Americans, in particular younger voters, and that's climate change. President Trump, with regard to the environment, you say that we have to have clean air and clean water. Vice President Harris, you H2O, call climate change an existential threat. The question to you both tonight is what would you do to fight climate change? And Vice President Harris, oh, this we'll start be good. with you. One this minute be good. for you each. Well, the former president had said that climate change is a hoax. And what we know is that it is very real. You ask anyone who lives in a state who has experienced these extreme weather occurrences, who now is either being denied home insurance or it's being jacked up. You ask anybody who has been um, the victim of what that means in terms of losing their home, having nowhere to go. We know that we can actually deal with this issue. The young people of America care deeply about this issue. And I am proud that as vice president over the last four years, we have invested a trillion dollars in a clean energy economy while we have also increased domestic gas production to historic levels. We have created over 800,000 new manufacturing jobs while I have been vice president. We have invested in clean energy to the point that we are opening up 
factories around the world. Donald Trump said he was going to create manufacturing jobs. He lost manufacturing jobs. And I'm also proud to have the endorsement of the United Auto Workers and Sean Fain, who also know that part of building a clean energy economy includes investing in American made products, American automobiles. It includes growing what we can do around American manufacturing Hi, and opening up auto plants, not closing them like happened under Donald Trump. Vice President Harris, thank you. It didn't happen under Donald Trump. Let me just tell you, they lost 10,000 manufacturing jobs this last month. It's going, they're all leaving. Uh, they're building big auto plants in Mexico, huh? in many cases owned by China. They're building these massive plants and they think they're going to- Yeah, why did he say that in the third person? That was United weird, right? States because of these people. What they have given to China is unbelievable, but we're not going to let that. China. We'll put tariffs on those cars so they can't come into our country because they will kill the United Auto Workers and any auto worker, whether come. it's in Detroit or South Carolina or any other place. What they've done to business and manufacturing in this country is horrible. We have nothing because they, they refuse. You know. Biden doesn't go after people because supposedly China paid him millions of dollars. He's afraid to do it. Between him and his son, they get all this money from Ukraine. They get all this Keeps money going from after all Biden. these different countries. And then oh. you wonder, why is he so loyal to this one, that one, oh. Ukraine, oh. China? Why he misses, he misses he Biden. He wished he were running against Biden so hard. From the mayor of Moscow's Buddy. wife. Why did he get, Your opponent's why did right she there. pay him three and a half million dollars? It's this is a crooked boss. administration, <laughs> and they're selling our country down the tubes. President Trump, thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs> the thank you. Candidates. Thank you. It's an historic night. This ABC News oh presidential debate. Oh, my debate. God. Oh, my God. All right. Wow, 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 wow. All right. We have four. If you look at the master list in the top right corner, we have four spots that we have called in our current game. We have been – can 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 one of the um, – can uh, Kai or someone – um, let me know in, uh, in my Discord just how many um, – that's a great shot – just how many uh, bingo winners we have gifted subs to tonight. Because uh, these subs – yeah, here we go. Now, good, finally, something good to watch. Thank you. Um, but, like, uh, throw up Miss – throw Miss – throw Mrs. Pookie up there. That's funny. That's a good spot. I think we have enough bingo spots, though. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to um, stress our uh, amazing bingo moderators. Can you also – can we just give a shout out, chat? Can we give some praise to our fucking hardworking moderators, people who set up the bingo game? They're gifting the subs, and I'm like reimbursing them. So, but like, they're taking care of this whole thing just so I can play uh, with the brain rot uh, soundboard, right? So they're letting me, like, they're covering the the master list, they're covering all the bingo spaces, and they're verifying the wins. They're doing everything that I am not, so that I can just, you know, do my really important, um, you know. What the. So I can do that all night. So it's really fucking cool of them. Uh, so shout out to the moderators. They work stupidly hard. Eleven bingos! Wow, that's a that's a presidential dozen. Eleven bingos. Hot damn. Eleven bingos so far. That could be you, by the way. You. If you want to win the gift of a Twitch subscription, right? Like some people have tonight. Play bingo with us. You got nothing to lose. Costs zero dollars. Just type exclamation point bingo in the chat. Click the link that gets spout out and play bingo with us, man. Um, and we have a lot of spaces, too. A lot of possible spaces um, that uh, our, our council kind of went nuts on, uh, making this um, very comprehensive um, presidential debate bingo card. Um, but, uh, yeah, go ahead. Get your bingo cards. I see people in the chat typing the command, exclamation point bingo. Love that. That means they're going to join us. They're going to get their bingo cards out. Um I wish I could open a tab and see how many people are playing with us, but I won't. Um, just so I can, you know, keep everything all organized here. I feel like a mad scientist right now. I feel like a very mad scientist because I'm running a soundboard. I got two monitors up. It's not a lot of monitors. I know my editors have like 20. But like for me, it's a lot because I got OBS on one. I got the stream on the other. Um, you know, and I'm trying not to fuck with this monitor too much. We got the subtitles that are going on. Very nice. Got my soundboard like I keep saying. Um, it's just there's there's a lot going on. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's good though. We got the Subway Surfers. You know, it just, it's stimulation overload. You know, uh, it's stimulation over. Uh, hold on. We we have someone here um, who is just dying to say something. Uh, they want to give their input. ReactBot, what do you think uh, of this debate so far, man? What are your thoughts? If you could summarize the debate in like a word, a sentence, a phrase, 
what do you got for us, man? What do you, what are your thoughts? This video is kind of a nothing burger. Okay. Yeah, you, you could say that. Sure. There's been a lot. Oh, we have almost a thousand active cards right now. You know what? Give it up. Give it up for you crazy folks. We got nearly a thousand people playing bingo right now. Erm, um, excuse me, sauce. Poggers. It is, Chuck. It is a little poggers. Damn. Um, I know you guys want me to turn React Bot up. I want to turn React Bot up. What that involves, though, is me fucking around with, like, OBS settings and the YouTube setting. And I don't want to do that just because I have the volume for almost everything perfectly level. But unfortunately, um, I can't really fuck with uh, the levels too much lest I ruin the uh, the stream. Um, so so you just have to really lean in and, and, and hear ReactBot say, Bro looking like an iPad kid. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, give him... Oh, I should give ReactBot subtitles. Uh, that means I'd have to redo all 700 videos. Because that's... Every time I press the button, he says one of... like. It's randomizing 700 videos of pre-recorded things. So, for example, bro really wants us to think he's funny. Sh fuck you! You're so you're you're so antagonistic. <laughs> I haven't seen that one in a long time. <laughs> True. Someone please clip that. That makes me laugh every fucking time. Um, but yeah, that's one of the few times you'll be able to hear ReactBot, unfortunately. Because once I turn this YouTube video up, the, the live stream up, then he, he gets, like, there we go. Like, now. See? I'm, and I apologize. Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Like, the Lord here answered. again, Bring me David Muir. Oh, it's a Bible verse! I love when he quotes the Bible. Three Fuck! Welcome back tonight. The time has come for closing old. statements and Vice President Harris. We begin Genesis. with you. Genesis, chapter 15, verse So I think nine. you've heard tonight <laughs> two very different visions Those are rare, too. One that is focused on the future. All right, closing remarks. And the other that is focused on the past. And an attempt to take us backward. But we're not going back. And I do believe that the American people know we all have so much more in common than what separates us. And we can chart a new way forward. And a vision of that includes having a plan. Not going back, Understanding Mark. the aspirations, the dreams, the hopes the ambition of the American people, which is why I intend to create an opportunity economy, investing Chat, in small businesses, address? in new families, <laughs> in what we can do around protecting seniors, what we can do that is about giving hardworking folks a break and bringing down the cost of living. I believe in what we can do together that is about sustaining America's standing in the world and ensuring that we have the respect that we so rightly deserve, including respecting our military and ensuring we have the most lethal fighting force in the world. I will be a president that will protect uh, our fundamental Susan, rights sorry. and freedoms, including the right of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. I'll tell you, I started my career as a prosecutor. I was a DA, I was an attorney general, a United States senator, and now vice president. I've only had one client, the people. And I'll tell you, as a prosecutor, I never asked a victim or a witness, are you a Republican or a Democrat? The only thing I ever asked them, are you okay? Do not come. And that's the kind of president we need right now. Someone who cares about you and is not putting themselves first. I intend to be a president for all Americans and focus on what we can do over the next 10 and 20 years to build back up our country by investing right now in you, the American people. Vice President Harris, thank you. President Trump. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? She should leave right now, go down to that beautiful White House, go to the Capitol, get everyone together and do the things you want to do, but you haven't done it and you won't do it because you believe in things that the American people don't believe in. You believe in huh? things like, we're not going to frack, we're not going to take fossil fuel, we're not going to do things that are going to make this country strong, whether you like it or not. Germany tried that, and within one year, they were back to building normal 
energy plants. Huh? We're not what ready for it. We can't sacrifice our country for the sake of bad vision. But I just ask one simple question. <laughs> Why didn't she do it? We're a failing nation. We're a nation that's in serious decline. We're being laughed at all over the world. All over the world, they're laughing. I know the leaders very well. They're, they're coming at to you, see dude. me. They call me. We're laughed at all over the world. They don't understand what happened to us as a nation. We're not a leader. We don't have any idea what's going on. We have wars going on Notice in the Middle East. We have. He didn't wars talk about his own policies with at all Russia in his closing and statement. Ukraine. We're going to end up in a third world war, and it'll be a war like no other because of nuclear weapons, the power of weaponry. I rebuilt our entire military. Uh -oh. She gave a lot of it away to the Taliban. She gave it to Afghanistan. What these people have done to our country, and maybe oh, yeah, toughest of all, is allowing millions of people to come into our country many of them are criminals and oh. they're destroying our country the worst president the worst vice president in the history of our country president trump the, thank you there wasn't even a closing that statement ABC News there was a diss track and a shitty one here in philadelphia that wasn't a closing statement Center. it was just not ah don't vote and for her Muir, thank you for watching she sucks. here in the u.s and all over the world and from uh -oh. all of us here at abc news good night oh man Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we are here now live kiss. on ABC kiss. with our kiss. post debate comments. I'm Martha Raddatz. It was no a kiss. lively debate from the economy to abortion to Afghanistan. All they right. had it all, and it was historic. Damn it. John Carl, fiery. All right. And that's that. And that's that. Oh man. I I'm sorry, I got a little I got a little um blue ball there at the end. I wanted a little kiss between them, but Overall, Kamala Harris performed, I think, exactly as well as I hoped she would tonight. Um, clearly much better than President Biden a few months ago. That was, as I continued, as I keep saying and continue to say, that was very hard to watch. That was tough. That was, like, Trump got a really good zinger in last time when he was like, I don't know what he's talking about and I don't think he does either. That was one of those, like, fuck. Not good. But that did not happen tonight. Tonight, Harris came out swinging. Harris was like standing up for herself, and repeat, repeatedly was like, "If I may, I'm sorry. I have to. I have to respond to that," and did, uh, and fought Trump and called him out, called him out on his lies and on his bullshit, uh, on his own hypocrisy over and over again. So that was actually quite refreshing. I was very happy about that. Yeah, someone in the chat just said Harris was zesty. I agree. Zesty's the word of the night. React by what do you think of Harris's performance tonight? Don't talk to me until I've had my morning coffee. Shut the fuck up. It's quarter of eight. That was a all right, fine. React about what do you think of Trump's performance tonight? This just be the harsh reality. That's not it, you're, fuck you. You're not saying anything. God, you're why you're about as good as uh, every other YouTube reactor. <laughs> oh man. Anyways. Uh I'm just kidding. I love you, React Bot. <laughs> Board. um but uh yeah 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 what were some okay so what were some highlights of the night um what were some highlight what made me laugh out loud um fuck i'm already oh man it's i'm losing it i'm forgetting it i'm forgetting all the the concept of a plan that was good right right when they asked him do you have a plan he's like i got a concept of a plan mm. um uh, oh, yeah, Abdul. What did she say about Ab – oh, eating – oh, my God. He's like, they're eating dogs in Springfield. <laughs> uh, like the fucking racist rhetoric of uh, – those. yeah, immigrants, they're, they're, they're fleeing to America and eating our dogs. That was about as fucking bad as it gets. That was insane. I'm really mad that I missed the um, transgender um, – operations on illegal aliens i really i'm i'm angry i missed that that's insane he said some actual insanity tonight some truly insane evil shit um there was um yeah trump progressively getting more and more mad throughout the debate oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's what it was i told the taliban leader no 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 <laughs> no 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 don't do that stuff yes i forgot that was clearly a highlight i that made me laugh out loud because he had a really good line um, in that Elon discussion, because we streamed that, um, he he told he told Putin, um, it was like you better not, 
Or no, no, no. He was. He said no way, and I said way. That that was pretty legendary. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, the pipelines. He was like really into the pipelines. No one was talking about the pipelines, and he was uh very focused on that. Um. She she is Biden. Yeah, yeah. She he wishes so hard that. Harris is Biden, and uh, it, it was obvious how much he misses Biden, his old his old opponent, um, that he just can't really keep up. He can't keep up with his current opponent anymore, and it very much shows. Very, very much shows. Um, oh, yeah, C-spot run or run-spot run. That was, that was a weird moment from the start of the debate earlier, way earlier. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I miss my old men. Hey, that makes one of us. Cause, uh, that was rough to listen to, but someone in the chat misses their old men and you know, that's, that's fine. Or do you? Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. I meant to say, ah, oh, you miss old men or do you? But I jokes moments passed. I fucked the joke up. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Pokemon go to the polls. Sorry, I'm just reading the chat now. I'm just having a blast. I'm having a rast read. I'm having a blast reading the chat. I'm getting tongue tied. The chat's so good. I'll tell you what. Um. Walk. Someone just wrote in all caps. Walk two of the polls. Oh, I my boo button. The one thing I didn't have on my massive soundboard is a fucking boo button. Um. Damn. 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 Uh, let me get a picture of the soundboard so I can tweet it out later and be like, erm, I don't know. I don't even know what cute commentary I'll have for this tweet, but we have a great, we had a great soundboard. And they said, no way. And I said, way. Um, okay. Think, oh, that's fine. I get that now. Jules, Jules just wrote, think Kamala will go to Woody's tonight. <laughs> I get that. That's a famous um, uh, gay bar in Philly, right? Um, never been myself, but uh, Aaron and I, we've walked past it uh, many a time when we were um, when we lived in Philly for a hot second. Philly's a great city. Oh, my God. Right. The late term abortions, like the nine month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're having post birth abortions and people they're getting abortions at eight, nine, ten months. What the fuck was he on about? Like. They're not, yeah, they're executing live, yes, yes, yeah, 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 that's not a thing that's happening at all, I, I totally forgot about that, thank you, chat, for refreshing my memory there, my goodness gracious, yeah, 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 so, okay, someone just wrote, can't believe you got a Hannibal Lecter reference, I'm, I'm shocked as well that we got a Hannibal Lecter reference, I'm only, um, I, I'm regretful that, um, it came from, um, Kamala Harris and not, uh, Trump. It should have come from Trump. She kind of stole his thunder, referencing the the Hannibal Lecter meme. Um, and so, we, you know, at least he got the bingo space, but I really would prefer if Trump said it himself because that's kind of his thing. Because um, he literally doesn't know um, uh, what asylum means. Um, he, thinks, he thinks it means insane asylum, which is very funny. <laughs> Jack, Trump, is this real? Chad, is this real? Poison Coco Coco. Jack, um, someone's, someone's telling us, Jack, Trump kept eating chocolate M&Ms and rubbing his belly. Is that right? Is that, is that right? Did the camera always deftly cut away? As <laughs> he was loudly going, mmm, I, I can see that happening. True. Right, ReactBot? Sorry, I zoned out. Oh, I wish you were listening. We were talking about Trump eating chocolate M&Ms off camera. Many, many are saying this. Yes, yes. There you go. That's that's the kind of tweet that Elon would reply. Interesting. Fascinating. Um, man, yeah, this was uh this was a very funny debate. There was some um there was some very fun uh fun little fun moment. Yeah, concerning, that's another thing. Yeah, concerning. Hmm, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking into it. Yep, 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 yep. Um but yeah, anyways, gamers, this was super fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to thank you guys for watching. 
whether you're in the chat or you were in the chat or you're just lurking, you're just watching. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the people who gifted bits and who subbed. Uh, let me let me give a shout out to Vendetta, our last sub. Vendetta four numbers. They sub for 12, 12 months, 12 months. They write. Uh, they wrote three minutes ago. They wrote, he misses Biden so much. Toxic Yowie even. Hell yeah. Oh, and we just got a brand new sub in the form of Vir Viridian Minstrel. They just subbed. Shout out to, uh, you. But, uh, gamers, um, uh, I had a lot of fun. Thank you very much. You know, uh, uh, we can, um, we can take this energy, actually. Um, shut the front door. Viridian Minstrel, as if subbing to me weren't enough, they just gifted five subs to the community. Un fucking believable. You legend. We have a lot of longtime subbers too, which is really cool. We have uh, Xenospheres. They've been sub for nine months. Um, or according to Trump, uh, when it's okay to kill babies. Um, thank you. Uh, we've got a lot of um, uh, multi. We got a lot of multi month subs here. Yeah, a lot of multi month subs. Subs. A lot of. A lot of loyal, loyal viewers here. I'll tell you what. Oh, look at that. Hootie Bad at Games just uh, gifted a sub to the community. That was nice of you. That was nice of you. Um, all righty, gamers. I'm going to stop recording. Uh, millions, millions of subs. Shia Bun? We could raid Shia Bun. They're part of Stage Light. Uh, I'd be down for that. Um, Reactbot, what do you think? Leave a comment telling me what your favorite part is. Okay. Thanks. I guess. I guess you can do that. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's uh, keep this energy going. We're going to raid someone. We're going to raid um, someone Epic Sauce. All right. We're going to raid. Um... Shia Bun. Shia Bun is part of Stage Light SMP. They're playing what looks to be a fairly spooky game. Um, so I hope it's not too scary for you guys. Um, but um, give uh, give give Shia Bun uh, a big ol' how do you do. AC Wasty just gave out a sub. And Weasel on a stick just gifted five community subs. What the fuck? Do not at me just subbed with Prime as well. The subs, I'm telling you, they're raining in many, many such cases. I'm not crying. You are. Shut the fuck up, React Bot. No one said anything crying worthy. My God, you're such a nerd. Um, alrighty, let's raid Shia Bun. They're playing a spooky game. Um, Lord Fudge just gifted us up to the Capitol. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Thank you, Lord Fudge, for the laugh. That was very fun. All right, gamers, give your attention and love. Keep this party going. All right, keep this party going. Uh, Shia Bun, you're about to get raided. Um, by a bunch of good people. Um, all right, everyone. Ta-ta, y'all. Ta-ta now, y'all. Ta-ta now, y'all. Ta-ta. Have a good time. I'll see you in the next debate. Bye. <laughs>